And hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a quote. I'm back with interview number two coming out for the REL. This is another episode of In the Sand featuring Berg. And Berg is actually from BDB. Uh, their team actually placed third uh, in this past inaugural tournament. And I just want to start off and say, hey, Berg, thanks for sitting down with me, man. Yeah, no problem, dude. Anytime. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, I asked this of everybody. How do you get started with Insurgency? So it's actually pretty funny. Uh, I started out in CSGO, and then I played uh, for a while, got pretty high up, and played some leagues in uh, ESEA. And then I got bored of that, went to Rocket League, and took like a pretty long break from first-person shooters. And then uh, after Rocket League got boring for a while, I just jumped into Insurgency because I saw it came out, and it was a top seller. And me and two of my other friends bought the game and then they just kind of like left and that's just like how i started playing insurgency okay and did you start off with source or did you just hop in with a sandstorm straight sandstorms about four months ago i got the game oh okay okay so you were like one of the beta players too yeah okay that's actually pretty cool uh when did you end up joining bdb uh i joined bdb in the beginning of january Okay, and did you end up joining because of uh, uh, like a link somewhere else? Did you meet them in game? How did you end up meeting them? So, throughout December, we were on break between uh, semesters for college, and I started streaming. And then Jen, who was on BDB second team, uh, I met her through my stream. And one day, I was just looking at uh, looking for players, and I saw that BDB post, and I was like, "Oh, Jen's on that team. I know her." I wonder if like I could get on like the team. So I messaged up Bark, and then uh, originally I just had plans on joining the second team, and then I ended up making the first team with uh, Bark East Root, and then the fourth wasn't decided yet. So they were like looking for players, and that's when I joined. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Um, you mentioned a little bit that you played in Rocket League uh, when you're kind of taking a break from FPSs. Um, did you have did, like did you take Rocket League seriously? Like was it like a competitive thing for you? And did you play like any other shooter competitively? Uh, no, I didn't play any other shooter competitively. But Rocket League definitely took competitive. I'm currently at like one of the higher ranks. I'm champ two. Nice. In, uh, okay. Rocket League. So I play Rocket League whenever I'm not playing this game. Pretty much, I still play it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, yeah. if you're still if you're still champ two, I. Uh, being a former Rocket League player myself, um, the highest I ever achieved was a uh, was a high diamond in duos. But um, oh, okay. I didn't ta I didn't dump the hours that some of my friends did. So, but that's pretty dope. Um, yeah. So the REL tournament that we just had, uh, the first the first tourney, it uh, you know you guys finished in third as I mentioned at the beginning, but you yourself put on like a great performance all throughout. Um, and I kind of wanted to ask how you felt about the tournament. Like you can talk about it, like how you felt about it as a, as a, as an event for yourself. You can talk about it, how you felt about it as a player, like how, how you felt about your performance. And then also kind of just about how you as a teammate felt. Right. So coming into REL tournament as a team, uh, it was definitely different from competing in the DGL that we're in because from going from just our league and season where, you know, the prize is just uh, fame and glory to actually playing an actual event worth money is just like a completely different mindset going in. So uh, me as a player, I've never really played for like money like that before. So, you know, I was preparing like how I do uh, for any sports because like I'm a division one college athlete right now. So like I kind of know how to like Okay, bring okay. myself up and uh, like be ready for like game type situations. So I felt like I had a good uh, mental preparedness for coming into the tournament. Um, it's definitely different playing for money. Uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, the stakes are higher. Yes, the stakes are definitely higher. Uh, I feel like as a team, we came in uh, pretty prepared on day one. Uh, we scrimmed RG actually uh, two days before, and we never even met them. And then they hit up Bark to scrim because no one else was on. So, I mean, we kind of scrimmed them for a little bit and learned, like, hey, this team's not even in DGL, and they're kind of kicking our butts right now. So throughout, we scrimmed Thursday, Friday, 
and we went back and forth, and we were doing pretty well against each other. Uh, pretty even games. And then, uh, shoot, draw blank. Oh, no, it's it's all good. Because the match that you guys had on Sunday was a really close match. It ended up going to three. It ended up going to three maps. I think that was the only matchup of the tournament that actually went to three maps. Yeah, I feel like actually second day, whenever uh, we saw they lost to CYG on... Uh, first round. They lost on first the round. first round, yeah, yeah two nothing. We kind of went in like, oh, because they came back and beat CYG the second time. So right. we were like, oh, okay, maybe CYG was having something bad. I feel like we kind of went in and thought like a little less of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we that's fair. As serious as we definitely could have. But I feel like second day, a bunch of us just had off days too. Like I wasn't playing at my best like I did on the first day for sure. Uh, and I think for us as a team, we just need to get better with staying consistent because we are very inconsistent with our games and through matches like we let our emotions get a hold of us and we need to like learn how to keep our emotions on check yeah i mean makes any sense oh no it definitely makes sense emotional uh emotional motivation is a very powerful tool um when you're competing the passion uh it naturally stirs emotions within you um it's kind of hard to set those aside and still retain that level of like focus and competitiveness because if you're not feeling the pressure at all, then generally speaking, you don't perform as well, as weird as it sounds. Uh, right. you, you being an athlete in real life, that probably resonates pretty deeply. You probably know a bunch of people who play better on game day than they do in practice and then vice yeah, versa. Sure. So, um, But that's cool though. No, that's actually a, that's an interesting bit of insight that i i had zero clue about but that's why we're doing yeah. this um but i mean you did talk about the inconsistencies and um i don't want to go in too deep on the team aspect of it because i'm more curious about um what you feel like you personally could have maybe done to uh play at a higher level was it just a like a matter of focus or was it just kind of like a physical thing like maybe you didn't sleep well enough the day before uh so first day i gonna be honest with you roommates and colleges are they're tough <laughs> and uh we live in like a five by 15 room almost Oof. so i mean he had him and his girl in there the second day so uh... having them in the room compared to not having them in the room is like a huge change you know what i mean like they weren't even really talking they were doing their own thing they, i think they were watching a movie i couldn't really hear it but, the presence was still yeah, there their though. presence yeah okay so, like that's, that's an uncontrollable like factor of yeah like, yeah of like thing about eventual lands too so i mean it's kind of good that i like get that sometimes but i mean it was kind of a high stakes day so <laughs> yeah that was. was yeah okay well i mean that even that being said it's not like you guys did poorly you know you guys didn't right. lose anything until you got into the second stage and even that was like a close fought battle so going into the next event um what are your goals personally like as a player and as a teammate do you, how far do you guys think you're going to get with the new competition coming in like veritas and potentially blue etc i think for me i'm going to have a better mindset because now i'm going to know like what's going to be going on uh before this tournament, actually, we took a two-week hiatus, and we just kind of took a break, and I didn't play at all for, like, almost a week and a half. Wow. So, coming up to this next tournament, I'm definitely going to be more prepared. I'm playing a lot more and learning new things and just practicing. Copy so that. I come and do the best as I can. How do you feel about other teams uh, joining the fray that uh, weren't in the tournament previously? Oh, that's good. Bring as many people as we can. You know, I'm always down to bring more people into the scene. I think it's good for the game. It's good for the players. We learn new things from other people. And it's just a good thing overall to have more people. There's no denying that. Spoken like a true competitor. Spoken like a true competitor. <laughs> <laughs> the um, I, I feel like there's going to be a, a lot of new things that teams are going to bring to the table. Like both the teams that participated in this first tournament, but also the new teams that are uh, going to be showing up. And it's honestly... a uh, it's exciting. The scene's growing. Um, I think that with the new level of focus and the new competitive focus content that's coming out for Sandstorm, I think that it's going to be a great chance for like all players, but especially players like yourself and uh, all these teams that are actively participating in these events to really get some exposure. So I'm really looking forward to that. 
Um, yeah, I am too. You mentioned that you stream at the very beginning of the uh, interview. Do you, by any chance, have um, a link or uh, like a link for that that I can put in the description as well as a Twitter that I can yeah. put on there? It's uh, t.tv slash Burgertown. It's spelled as B-U-R-G-H-E-R-T-O-W-N. Awesome. I'm going to put that in there, and that'll actually end up concluding it, man. Thanks for sitting down and chatting with me. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play this next uh, this next tournament on April 27th. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It's good being here. Awesome. And again, guys, that is going to be April 27th of this year is the next tournament for the REL. Thank you for tuning in to this episode two of In the Sand with Berg from BDB. I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.